OK, thanks for having me, guys. Um, OK, um, I'm going to be coming out with a new hardware product. It's called The Spin. Jackscore is the name of the company. It's a startup company I'm trying to build, building next generation kinds of remote controls. I've been kind of obsessed with this idea for a long time. Um, I actually brought, this is my actual uh, stereo remote, remote control. Um, maybe I'm a little more picky than most people, but I've kind of always had a pet peeve with uh, IR remote controls. I always find myself always having to change the volume of my stereo um, all the time. Every song that switches, um, an action scene comes up, and I'm always grabbing the remote control and turning it down. I live in an apartment. So this is like, and I got a pretty nice stereo, so it's like kind of like this constant thing. I'm always picking up the remote control all the time. Um, this is also made a little bit annoying because my stereo is kind of low in my entertainment center behind glass. And from where I sit on my, on my uh, sofa, I always have to pick up the remote control and actually like point it so I get line of sight to my stereo. And I know it sounds, maybe it sounds done, maybe, maybe people aren't as annoyed by this thing, um, but what I came to the conclusion is what would be really great is if I had a, a wireless volume knob sitting right on my coffee table, then I wouldn't even have to look at my remote control. I could just go bam, just like you do in a car. Right? This is the same reason that cars all have volume knobs, is because you can use them without looking at them, and they're immediate. And I thought, man, like if I could have a, a wireless volume knob that actually controlled the hardware volume of the stereo, that would be amazing. I was like, I started, started looking around. There's not a single product out there, not one. I, well, there, there is one, actually. It's a $34,000 uh, <laughs> high-end stereo company called DVLA makes something like this. It's not this big though. It's like this huge, huge things with a huge volume knob. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, I was looking around. I was like, this this product should exist. I want a volume knob that controls my stereo. Why can't I build? Why can't I buy them anywhere? Um, so I went on a journey trying to figure out what would it take to build this thing. I mean, I was where I was aware that there was other products like this. Um, uh, Microsoft makes a dial like for this, like, but it just controls certain things in Windows 10. Um, there's a there's a USB scroll wheel that works on Mac, but again, you can only just do a couple things. You can do um, just volume control of Mac. Um, other than that, there's really not nothing out there. There's no there's no universal remote control with a big metal scroll wheel, like I, what I was thinking. And uh, so I, I, I was like, this, this maybe could work. And I spent the time and learned how to build it. Um, I, didn't, um, I didn't want to bring in my whole stereo and so you could see what it's actually like, like really controlling a big stereo. Um, but I, I, found, um, I found the product, this thing was really good. Excuse me. Um, it was really good for controlling other things other than my stereo. Um, I wrote a, a very general purpose uh, JavaScript library and I found once I started learning uh, how to uh, write these little remote control scripts, I was like, there's something really cool going on here because I can do so many things with this. Um, and I, So I started writing all these, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, I started writing all these other, what I call adapters, and I wrote one for Cody, and that's what I'm going to be showing, yeah, showing your, here. Your screen, I think. Yeah. Is, uh, Let me. Yeah. Computers. <laughs> oh, there we go. Why do you have to sleep, computer? Is that working? There we go. Yeah. Well, okay. Cool. Okay, I'm going to restart. Yeah. 
Sorry, what's Cody? Cody is a media player. It's um, pretty common. People use uh, Raspberry Pis, install it to uh, play their music and movies. So you'll see the, uh, the lights flash on this thing. And then, yeah, everyone can see this, right? OK. So as you'll see, I'm controlling Cody with a dial. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to navigate around to my music video collection, give you guys an idea what it's like to use something like this. So anybody that's used, how many people here actually use Kodi? So decent amount. Have you guys ever seen a remote control work this fast? Not really. Um, a dial, a dial is really kind of cool when, when you, when you, especially when you get used to it. It's really good at going both slow, like you can go like this, and fast. And um, I should maybe reinforce that it is very fast. It's, it's actually four times faster than what you're seeing here. I actually had to slow it down by about fourfold. So it's, it's, it's got a res resolution of 32 pulses per revolution. So I've scaled that down to just eight. So it's only eight there. Now, it's not just for scrolling up and down. If I if I pick one, the device, the device itself is dumb, but the software platform is smart, and it actually knows that it's, it's Cody's playing something. So it's automatically, it automatically goes into volume control mode. So it's like a smart switch. You don't have to manually switch between navigation and volume. It automatically knows. And if I hit the button, it stops goes right back into navigation mode. And then, another fun thing, it can also do uh, scrubbing. So if I press a button, I can, I can scroll through back and forth. And I think this is better than, like I, I can I could see, but I can see from the, from the, uh, the, uh, the bar there, where it is in the, in, the, in the video, and then I can also push on the dial, and it goes faster. And I can pause, or stop, and go back into play mode. So you've got like this, this new kind of remote control that I think is, is pretty cool. Um, uh, I can maybe talk a little bit about the technologies I'm using. Um, I'm actually a JavaScript developer, and I've um, I've spent a lot of time making the uh, the JavaScript library very very easy to use. You can write little programs like this, uh, literally anything that you can do with Node.js. You can harness the the events that's that's um, that's coming off of this device, and then use that to remote control pretty much anything in your home. Anything that, that you can find a, uh, a JavaScript library to do, you can do with this device. Um, um, I've got, uh, <coughs> oh, one thing I should show, okay. You'll, you'll see in the top center there, I'm controlling the software volume of Kodi. Now, all the audio files in the room will know that that's not actually the best way to, to control audio. What you want to do, you want to control the hardware um, audio, the hardware volume of your stereo, not the software volume of Kodi. And I, I have a way to do that um, through, another, through another script that I've written that can, uh, that can route, that can route these, uh, the volume commands to your stereo. And I've got, um, I've got support for three stereos uh, on the go, and hopefully more. Um, hopefully more once, yeah. Once it's uh, 
once it's out there and w once I get once I get my hands on more uh, units, I can build more. A question? Uh, which okay. Uh, <coughs> so right now it's the stereos I own. <laughs> <laughs> I got support for, for Anthem, that's a Canadian manufacturer. Uh, Deenan, and um, Deenan is the same company as Marantz. And um, between those two brands, uh, because the API is shared between about maybe 15 or so uh, stereo units. Um, so about 15 units are gonna be supported right out of the box. And I've also got, um, I've got a Sonos. So I'm gonna add uh, Sonos support also. Yeah, and then in addition to that, um, I mean, all Bluetooth speakers will be supported because um, uh, I'll have an adapter for Windows, uh, Mac, Linux, uh, Android, iOS. So any Bluetooth speaker that you connect to any computer can be controlled by this thing. Uh, any other questions? I don't really have that much more. Yeah. Does Cody have a JavaScript API that you use to control the playback? Uh, Cody has a, a TCP uh, API, and I communicate over, it's, it's JSON over TCP. So you can actually tell that into, uh, into Cody. Do you have an open source library for extending, um, I guess, the, the library of software you use to control anything at this point? Yeah, okay, so at the moment I have a, I have a low level shared library, and that's, and that's all you need. Um, uh, maybe later on I can I can build out the software stack a little bit more um, so that especially for mobile if you wanted to build a mobile app that supported this you'll need another another, another sort of library um, uh, but it's it's pretty good it's uh, really easy to use really good easy to get started with when it goes to market what's the price point that you think it would be it's gonna have it's metal work is really expensive so it's gonna it's gonna end up around two hundred dollars US so one or one ninety nine US, um, which is it's right in line with other universal remote controls. Like I'm kind of competing with with the likes of like Logitech, I guess, and that's it's like it's a mid range for for remote controls. Uh, I was just curious, kind of how it works. I mean, you mentioned there's an optical encoder. And yeah, yeah. So. Okay. <coughs> okay. So the, the device itself, yeah. Solid metal knob. Um, that's different than every other device you've looked, you've seen. I've looked. They're they're usually just cheap plastic. This is solid metal. So um, that's what gives it this this ability. Uh, maybe I'll take one that's off. So when I'm spinning it, it's it's got that that feel, that slick feel. Um, that took work. Um, <laughs> that took work. Yeah. It, you can't do it with these, these cheap rotary encoders. They don't work. You've got to debounce them, and you can't spin them fast. So I had to use an optical rotary encoder. Um, so the device on the inside uh, has two little, photo uh, <coughs> two little photo sensors that are recording the, the rotation, and it does it very, very accurately. The data doesn't need to be, de uh <coughs> doesn't need to be debounced. So it's uh, super accurate, um, really nice. Um, this version is Wi-Fi. I'm using the ESP32 chip, um, so it's both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Um, <coughs> but the uh, the final version will be just Bluetooth. I found it just doesn't get a good enough battery life. But with the Bluetooth only version, I should get about one month at least, uh, maybe more, battery life. Are they rechargeable? Or yeah, yeah. So it's got a, it's got a pretty b big uh, battery in there. It's uh, 1800 milliamp hour. And it only uses about two mil two milliamps, so it's looking at like, like around like nine hundred online hours, and rechargeable. Yeah. What's it called? Can you use it with Apple TV? Pa oh, conceivably, yes. Uh, I don't have an Apple TV app yet, um, but yeah, I'd love to support it. I mean, I just I don't have I don't own one, but oh, if it's popular, I, I would buy one. Yeah. Is the, is the limitation that it has to be, you have to be able to communicate over Bluetooth? When you were showing the remote at the beginning, like the way that the IR protocol or whatever the hell it is that actually makes regular remotes work, are you, are you able to emulate that somehow, or is, is it only if there's a Bluetooth? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. So, the, like, yeah, the end product will just be Bluetooth only. Um, yeah, like, conceivably, I could add support for any stereo 
that um, that has a, a, an API, a, like a network jack. Almost all new stereos have a network jack and uh, Wi-Fi, and they have a serial over TCP API. And so that's what I did for Anthem and um, and Denon. Yeah. So almost all of them work similarly. Okay. So they should all be able to add support. But then that's connected to a computer. Yeah. Yeah. I either a computer or, or a mobile app. I'm going to try to do both. So okay. desktop apps and mobile apps. Okay. And that will, that will serve as the community, the, where the smarts live. And if it was Wi-Fi, you wouldn't be able to eliminate the computer? Or would it just work on the you, you, you end up, I ended up, I thought about this a long time. You end up with the same problems. You have to pair it with something. Um, possibly, possibly, if I were to team up with uh, like a stereo manufacturer, I could I could get like the get support written at the firmware level and directly connect to some stereos. That is one area I'm looking at. Well, talk to me on. Sure. Yeah. There's there there yeah. There's a bunch of ways to do all this stuff. Um, I'm I I came up with you know the ways that 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 seem to work really well. Um, at home. Um, let's see what else. Um, yeah, I was hoping to have this thing for sale by Christmas, but um, it's amazing how long uh, delays and um, lead times are. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to get this done for another at least three months, um, but then hopefully start selling them in small quantities and then uh, maybe a Kickstarter. Yeah. Um, how, are you doing, how are you doing manufacturing? Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a that's a whole talk on itself. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I'm starting to learn unwind uh, how to manufacture this. Like, this is a bootstrapped solo startup, and uh, so this was this was tough. Uh, I s but I, I started to figure it out. I mean, between 3D printing and um, and sending uh, PCB designs off to China, and uh, the metal work was actually one of the easiest things that I did. Um, I just sent my 3D design over to a, to a company in, this, in uh, China and they, they ship back parts. Now the problem is CNC is really expensive at low quantities. So that's, that's one kind of big caveat. The, the plus side is uh, the quality is amazing, really good. Yeah, anything else? No? We'll wrap it up there. Um, if Feel free to come and try them out um, if you're interested, and uh, you can follow me on uh, Jackscore on uh, on Twitter if you're interested. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you.